Um, Nick, we're just looking at these uh, images here because, of course, um, they are really reflecting people's deep alarm and deep concern about the fact that um, the Queen is extremely unwell um, and, of course, that we are expecting the news from Balmoral that she's having uh, treatment or that, indeed, they are unable to help Her Majesty anymore. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The palace has just issued uh, this statement. It says the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Within the past few minutes, Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. To recap on the statement, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King, that is Charles, uh, and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. Her Majesty was 96 years old. She became Queen on the 6th of February, 1952, on the death of her father, King George VI. She heard the news while staying at a game lodge in Kenya at the age of 25, and her coronation in Westminster Abbey was watched by more than 20 million people. She was uh, married to Prince Philip for 73 years until his death in April of 2021. And Charles, their first child, was born in 1948. Uh, he now becomes the new king. In 2015, Her Majesty passed Queen Victoria to become the longest reigning monarch in British history. And in February 2022, we saw the 70th anniversary of her becoming queen. And she made more than 250 visits to Commonwealth countries, and was head of state in Australia and Canada and New Zealand. Winston Churchill was Britain's Prime Minister when she came to the throne, and Liz Truss was a 15th Prime Minister. The BBC is interrupting its normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. In a statement, the palace said the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of Her Majesty the Queen.
This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. In a statement, the palace said, the Queen died peacefully at Balmoral this afternoon. The King and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. The death of Her Majesty brings to an end the longest reign in British history, spanning eight decades of immense change. Throughout that time, Her Majesty was the one constant presence in public life, a head of state who personified stability and reassurance. Her life had been dedicated to the service of the people and her reign was characterised by a steadfast sense of duty. Elizabeth was just 25 when she came to the throne in 1952 on the sudden death of her father King George VI as Britain was still recovering from the Second World War. She was sustained by her 73-year marriage to the late Prince Philip. Her strength and stay, as she once described him, was at her side for three major jubilee celebrations. Elizabeth II was the most widely travelled head of state in history. The Queen of 15 nations, head of the Commonwealth of 54 countries and territories. Her Majesty's death brings the second Elizabethan age to a close and a long and momentous chapter in British life. A reign marked above all else by a sense of service to others. A reign unlike any other in the long history of Britain and the Commonwealth. Our Royal Correspondent, Nicholas Witchell, is with me as we report the news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And one thinks immediately, Nick, first of all, of the loss for the royal family. One does. This, for the nation, for them, this is an absolutely massive moment. The moment that so many people have dreaded for so long has come. It's a moment of great solemnity and national sadness. It's hard, really, fully to take it in. It's no great surprise, given her age and her declining health. But nonetheless, it is a very considerable shock to feel that she has died. Now, millions of people, I think, as they learn this news, will feel a sense of personal loss. And I think many people will find it rather disorientating. Let's just understand this moment. It isn't just the death of the longest lived, longest reigning monarch in British history, a monarch who has been there in the background to our lives for most of us, for all of our lives. It is the end of what I think history will judge to have been one of the most remarkable reigns in the thousand plus year years of the British monarchy, a reign which will be remembered and talked about in years to come. Now whether you are a monarchist or not, and we know as we've said this afternoon that not everyone is, she was a monarch who earned the widest possible respect here in the United Kingdom and throughout the world. It's the end of the reign of Elizabeth II, a monarch who always put duty first, who brought dignity and decency to the highest office in the land, who embodied the best of qualities, who's been a focus for national unity and identity, and who has been the still calm centre of stability and reassurance to this nation and the other nations of which she has been head of state for more than 70 years. While so much around her has changed, she has been a distillation of our national identity. She has been constant in an ever-shifting world, constant, steadfast, dependable, dutiful. These are all rather old-fashioned words, old-fashioned concepts even, but I think that they sum up what she brought to the role of monarch. We recall the pledge she made on her 21st birthday. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Well, she truly remained true to that pledge. It was a life 
of finely judged surgery.